few weeks ago, I had a, a person come in for a lot detail position where we move a lot of cars. And he proceeded to tell me that he's had three DUIs in the last five years. I did actually have a conversation via phone where a guy had me on speakerphone and actually was, he ended up going to the bathroom during the interview and still talking. It was not a good idea. With my past employer, I had people showing up pajama pants, literally just rolled out of bed. And then you ask them a very easy question, like, why did you apply to work here? I don't know. Like, do you want to work here? Like, you know, so things like that, just like I said, just rolling out of bed, absolutely zero desire for a job. I'm assuming they were just checking a box for something, but I've seen those more often than I like to admit. A few weeks ago, I had a, a person come in for a lot detail position where we move a lot of cars, and he proceeded to tell me that he's had three DUIs in the last five years. So that probably wasn't the best. I, I guess it was honest. I did appreciate the honesty, but it was not, he did not get the job. <laughs> What's one thing that a candidate does that kind of ruins their chances with you? I think it's it's just kind of focusing on stuff outside of the interview. You know, some people maybe have had a past history with a, a previous employer that was just bad and, and, you know, they kind of bring that into the interview. And so when you're talking with that new employer, it's very important to, you know, really showcase the excitement and what you can do for that company and not necessarily to focus on why you're trying to get out of the, the old company or, or the old situation. I'd say for the, the biggest red flag or miss that an applicant could have would be just not being prepared. It doesn't take much to get prepared, especially nowadays with this, like kids have resources at their fingertips. It's not hard to be take a little bit of time, five minutes to prepare, you know, coming in and asking very scripted questions, very easy questions to, to, to answer and I get an I don't know. I mean, that's it's just very little effort being put into it. I had a boss tell me one time that the best you're ever gonna see someone is at the interview. And if they're telling you, I don't know that how much effort they're putting in the interview, how much effort are they gonna put into the job, so. You know, think about the fact that this is still a professional conversation that you're having with someone. And so you wanna make sure that you've not only prepared the environment that you're in, but also that you're willing to give it the same sense of professionalism that you would if you were sitting in front of them in their office. What can one of our students do to uh, qualify for higher pay? So for qualifying for higher pay, a lot of it is really just documenting your experience well. Not only in the conversation that you're having with the hiring manager, but also in your resume. It's worth taking that time and effort when you're applying to multiple jobs. If one employer is a little bit different than the other, to think about are there ways that I should be changing my resume for one versus the other? Even students where you're coming from a background of maybe you have little to no experience, or really documenting what you've done while you were in school, what types of equipment you've worked on, and to what degree. Were there opportunities to take additional certifications that weren't required for the degree, but you still went and you took those certifications? And that shows us a sense of even longevity and, and saying that well, this student not only wants a job, they're hoping to get a job that they will then do for a number of years afterwards. Um, so it's showing that dedication as well. My final question to you is gonna be, what makes this WyoTech Career Fair so sought after in your eyes? This is actually our first one. So I'm just kind of getting my feet wet. My experience has been really positive, getting to talk to kids from all over the country. And so I kind of get a, a, a different culture from each state so far, which is awesome. I'm actually doing more of the talking <laughs> than they are, which is a good thing because I know they're attentive and I know they know what they're getting into if, if they were to get an offer from, from us. We have four or five chances to be here and talk to students every year, which isn't always the case with other schools. So the more opportunity we have to not only come and visit with these students, but also to hire them quickly and easily is definitely a big factor. I, I haven't had an open up a door myself all day and my hands have been empty 90% of the time, the kids are opening doors, offering to help bring things in. I don't know if they've been coached on that before or what, but I mean, just a lot of kids that are really willing to help, whatever they can do, everyone's friendly. Hi, sir, yes, sir. Really respectful, polite, professional. It's obviously a different caliber of kid down here. Today I'm out here at the job fair. There's a lot of opportunity knocking at your door here. It can be a little overwhelming at first walking into here, I'd recommend like walking in with one of your buddies and just going table to table because everybody here has something to offer. It can be intimidating, but once you get into it, it's not. You really want to talk to everybody because there's opportunities 
everywhere. Like some of these employers, especially the uh, the diesel with the automotive, they're willing to hire automotive people. So talk to everybody, get your name out there, shake a lot of hands. All these people here want to hire you. Most people leave here and go directly to, to, to their career. Even in the future, if the job market does change and I'm out of a job, I could talk to career services and they'll, they'll help me out just because I went to Wyatt Tech. It feels really good because it's a lot of security for my future.